We're going to go ahead and take a look at chromosomes, genes, alleles, and mutations as an introduction to genetics. So let's start off by talking about how DNA is actually packaged. So in the center of all of your cells, there is a nucleus, and your nucleus and every one of your body cells contains 46 chromosomes, and each chromosome looks like this. Each chromosome is made up of two sister chromatids. We'll talk more about that later or go review mitosis. Uh, we're going to be learning about meiosis pretty soon, so... Uh, we're going to revisit this as well, too. But the chromosomes are kind of like a spool of yarn. And if you were to pull on one end and stretch it all the way out, eventually you'd end up with uh, DNA. But DNA is actually packaged by being coiled around uh, these little proteins here, which is coming up the next slide. And after they get packaged like this, they get coiled again and again. It's called super coiling, basically. And this helps to package uh, all of your genetic information into each of your tiny little cells. Keep in mind that every single one of your body cells contains your entire genome. And we're going to see that word coming up in a little bit as well too. So your DNA gets packaged into these chromosomes by being coiled up super tight. And um, we're talking specifically here about eukaryotic chromosomes. We are eukaryotes and the other eukaryotic organisms are plants and fungi and protists. But here's a close-up diagram of how that supercoiling is actually happening. I told you that the DNA is wrapped around these proteins, and these proteins are called the histones. They're called histone proteins. And every core that looks like this actually has eight histone proteins, eight histone molecules. And each one of these little subunits right here, so what I'm encircling with my cursor right here, is called a nucleosome. So we can say that DNA is, is wrapped up tightly in nucleosomes. So one nucleosome is basically eight histone proteins surrounded by uh, a length of DNA. And this continually happens and goes all the way around and which helps to just uh, wrap up the DNA really, really tight. Okay. A gene, so we people talk about uh, my parents passed my genes to me. I am what I am from my parents. A gene is a basic unit of heredity. Uh, Chemically, what a gene is, is just a length of DNA. But because that is more important than just the letters that the DNA is made up of, um, it actually codes for something. So we give it a, a separate name. It's a gene. A gene is a specific length of DNA. It's a basic unit of heredity. It's a segment of DNA on a chromosome that describes how to make a certain protein. So if you've already learned about transcription and translation, you'll understand that a gene can get transcribed into mRNA and then translated by a ribosome into an actual protein, a sequence of amino acids that is a protein that has a certain function. And proteins can be anything from enzymes to hormones to antibodies to structural proteins um, like collagen in the skin and in the hair, basically. And genes are located at specific locations. It's easy to remember here. A location is basically a locus. More than one would be two or more loci, L-O-C-I. So on a chromosome, there is a specific locus, and at that specific locus, there may be a specific gene. So we're going to be looking at that when we're talking about genes for eye color, genes for uh, particular diseases, genes for producing hemoglobin, for example, will all be at a specific locus on a specific chromosome. The thing is that all humans, we all have 46 chromosomes in every single one of our cells, and we all produce the same enzymes, and uh, there, may, there may be some variations, but in general, things that we really need, like amylase in our saliva to break down starch, we all have a gene to make that enzyme called salivary amylase, and that gene is located in the exact same place for all humans, okay? That's why men and women can have babies, and they can produce functioning children because those genes are on the same location, and that mix of genes will determine the specifics of the baby. One more thing is called the genome. The genome is the whole of the genetic information of an organism. So you can we can talk about the human genome. That's all of the genes combined in all 46 chromosomes of humans. You can talk about the, the fruit fly genome, or you can talk about the uh, flatworm genome. It's specific to each organism, or even for plants and bacteria as well. Okay, The E. coli genome is all of the genetic information that's found in the E. coli, for example. 
Okay, here's a word. Remember how to spell it. it has three L's in it. Uh, you can pronounce it allele or alleol, depending on where you are in the world. I'm gonna probably switch between them because I'm inconsistent like that. But allele, an allele is basically a different form of the same gene. So you can talk about a gene for eye color, which is located at a specific locus. But that gene could have different forms, and that's why you can have different types of eye colors. Eye color is actually more complex like height and uh, propensity for obesity, something like that. But uh, if you talk about other types of things like, I don't know, the presence of freckles or the absence of freckles or the presence of mid-hair, mid-digit hair, I'm just looking at my hand right now. If you have some hair that's hanging out on your mid-digits, that's also controlled by a gene. But that gene can have different forms. One form results in hair being there and one form results in hair not being there. So we're just going to use eye color as a, as, a, as a simple example here. And an allele is any of the different forms of a particular gene that occupies the same locus as other alleles of the same gene. So the gene is always referring to a particular position on a chromosome, but it could have different forms. And those different forms are just chemically speaking, a few differences in, in some of the letters there, maybe only one letter different. So if you know that DNA is made up of A's, T's, C's, and G's, then you may realize that uh, two different alleles for the same gene just might have a few different letters that are different. So it differs from other alleles by only a few bases. And these alleles are represented by letters when we talk about genetic Punnett square crosses determining um, the genotypes and phenotypes of the kids, you're going to be using a lot of letters like big A, little a, big B, and little b. So for example here, here are two chromosomes, uh, two of your 46 chromosomes, one you got from dad, one you got from mom. Notice that the locations of the genes are the same on the exact on the exact same size chromosome. So in this case, the eye gene is located in the same place, uh, the hair gene located in the, same, in the same place, tongue roller or not tongue roller, the gene is located in the same space. This is kind of a joke, not so smart gene or just smart gene. The point is the genes are located in the same, in the same spot, in the same locus, but the form may be different. This dad may be giving the big B form while the mom may be giving the little B form. Big B meaning brown eye, uh, little B meaning blue eye. So what will the kid get in the end? Well, this, is a, this, is, this depends on dominant recessive relationships, which, which will come up later. But it's important for now to understand that alleles are different forms of the same gene different forms of the same gene. You don't have to get different ones from both parents. In this case, we'll see that both dad and mom are contributing a big T or the ability to tongue roll into their kids. So it's highly likely or almost statistically uh, guaranteed that their kid is going to be able to roll their tongue as well because they're getting the same form here. Okay. The number of chromosomes we've mentioned already, um, all most human cells or all human cells should have 46. There are exceptions if there's various types of uh, genetic diseases. Um, 46, that's two copies of 23. So 23 you got from mom and 23 you got from dad. This number we call the diploid number. Uh, when, when cells have two copies of chromosomes, we say that the cell is, is diploid. There are some organisms that have three copies or four copies, and that gets very complex. But for us, we're humans, it's easy for us to remember that uh, our diploid number is 46. So that's all our body cells have 46. The only cells that don't have 46 are those cells that are involved in making more people. That would be sperm cells and egg cells. That makes sense because when a sperm cell and egg cell are going to combine together, you have 23 in one and 23 in another, and that makes a total of 46. So n equals 23 is considered the haploid number. Think of haploid rhyming with half, 23. Diploid sounds like double, so we can say n equals 23 and 2n equals 46. All your body cells or somatic cells have 46 chromosomes. Sperm cells and egg cells have 23. And that makes sense to make a normally functioning human being. Okay, that was a short introduction. The next video, we're going to continue talking about uh, mutations that can happen. And one specific example of a mutation um, which results in a well-understood disease called sickle cell anemia. Stay tuned.